And we're back with a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kol Nika Gule joins us this morning for Off the Press. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you on short notice. Thank you very much, Messi. Good All right. morning. And good morning to our viewers. Yes, and please. Globally. Let's uh, quickly take a look at the papers. Uh, start off with the punch. Punch talks about the CBN Forex ban. Nigerians imported 18 trillion cooking oil, meat. Others in seven years, that's according to report. Importers ordered agri animal product, others from Asia and EU, African countries. Firms source dollars at parallel market over Forex ban on 41 items. And you also find another caption, federal government to repay World Bank $800 million loan for 25 years. Wow. Doctors in diaspora petitions National Assembly over anti-migration bill. And then Senate probes accountant general over 74 billion naira funds. And justice, uh, we still look at the papers. Banana Island seven-story building collapse. Lagos alleges structure lacks permit. So how did the structure uh, get to that point if it wasn't uh, given any sort of permit? I mean, can anybody just wake up and erect a structure without getting the permit? Is it even possible? I want you to think about it. Then uh, Atiku dismisses exile plan and slams protesters police arrest two over OAU students' debt. That's the size of it this morning on the punch. We turn our attention away from the punch and just uh, quickly look at the Daily Independent. IMF OK's tight fiscal policy and increased tax for Nigeria. Warns rising interest rates could trigger global recession. But, I mean, I'm just confused because at some point you have the IMF saying, oh, increase the interest rate. Uh, and, and now they're saying, oh, the interest rate could actually trigger global recession. Where exactly is IMF on this particular one? And Senate sustains AGF's indictment over 74 billion naira extra budget payment. Kogi governorship election shocks as court nullifies Kogi APC ward and local government congresses. And then again, you find Liberal Party crisis. State chairman stop Apapa from entering national secretariat. Atiku cannot help you win the Kogi governorship ticket. River tells uh, River State Governor tells PDP Dino Mila. I mean, you, you you need to look at that conversation, the back and forth between. Uh, Dino Melaye and of course yes on week of River State federal government okays 23 billion now for Enugu Onicha Road and third mainland bridge approves uh, 18.544 billion for renovation of customs auditorium and vehicles obese trend, uh, trade deuces impersonate him in London uh, United Kingdom uh, immigration service reviews I mean that was part of our uh, top trending this morning. And then you get you find Diri Iwayawu emerges PDP governorship candidate in Bayosa and in Imo State. And we'll just leave it at that. Interim government alien to Nigeria says the CSOs and cautions against Rwanda's experience. Now, uh, we have the business day in front of us. Senate presidency raised stocks. Uh, uh, stocks. Muslim, Muslim tickets concern. Then again, you find election petition, what Nigeria can learn from Ghana and Kenya. Fight suspension, Nigerians cross border to fly Emirate. Flight suspension, Nigerians cross border to fly Emirate. And search for senior officers for next government turns to CBN governor. These are some of the headlines on the business day. And then we we'll just quickly look at the, uh, the nation newspaper. Obi lacks right to contest my victory. Tunubu tells the tribunal. Okay. Uh, Shatima validly uh, nominated as running mate. APC, Atiku PDP cannot query president's elects qualification. Okay. Now, there's, there's been a lot of statement and back and forth with all of this. You find how OB was detained in London by aid. G5 governors, mini uh, convention plans deepens as PDP crisis also worsens. So it's like, okay, 
Uh, the G5 are planning. The crisis has not ended. National Stadium Surulere, the hard facts and more of an editorial. Presidential poll, most credible in Nigeria's history. That's what Festus Keamo is quoted to say. Observers report uh, beavers high. Uh, all of this, you find that, right? No, but, but we'll just leave it at that. Nick Agule uh, is on standby to share his thoughts. Nick, thank you once again for joining us. Thank you very much, Messi. Mm. I'd like you to, you know, share your thoughts. I'm probably sure that prior to this time, you uh, seen and heard the report of Peter Obi being detained. He's been impersonated. There's an impersonator. Uh, when he arrived, he threw airport. What exactly do you think that uh, this means? And uh, uh, what can you say to that? Do you think that there's a conspiracy somewhere? Well, we, we live in the days of uh, social media. You know, in the days of uh, the conventional media, uh, usually news were verified, uh, were confirmed, and probably filed in by a reporter who was on the scene, or newspaper houses or media houses, including TV and radio stations, picked their news from uh, agencies like uh, a News Agency of Nigeria and all of that. So uh, then, uh, whatever came up in the news, was more to be credible than not. But uh, these days, we live in the days of uh, what uh, perhaps is called the new media, uh, which includes social media. And people have platforms, global platforms, to be able to spew out uh, whatever they want to spew out. Uh, some of the things that uh, they are putting out there have some major credibility, and some are outright falsehood. Uh, in these uh, times, also, <clears throat> we have uh, uh, computers that have developed into artificial intelligence and all sorts of uh, capabilities where people can superimpose people's pictures on particular scenes and make it look as if it's credible. Uh, now, you can even have people uh, copy my voice and then use my voice to say whatever they want to say, and it will look legit that I'm the one saying it. So when, when this news come out, my, my own approach to it is that I wait to see it from the conventional media. I would like to see it on a Plus TV or any other TV or read it from a credible uh, source uh, before I, I will take to heart. Um, uh, whatever it is, if that is indeed the case, it will not be long before even the British tabloids will publish it for us and the British uh, uh, TV stations and radio stations will pick it up because Peter Obi is no longer a non-entity. Peter Obi as uh, a front-running presidential candidate in a country like Nigeria, which is uh, the signature of all eyes uh, if he has an issue like that, it will not be long before we know. It was put out by Obidati Media. And I don't think that uh, if that came from them, and you also had the professor who is very notable, Professor Chinyere, who is a communication expert, um, I'm not sure that it's something that uh, we begin to say there was names have been mentioned. And however, uh, we've, we've also not had the United Kingdom, you know, disclaiming that. Now, he was asked to step aside. There were witnesses. According to that report, it was because of the intervention of Nigerians around who had noticed that he had been away for a while, and that actually raised their concern. But not for that. One cannot actually tell. And that was when, you know, the immigration officers decided to report that oh, there's an impostor, someone is impersonating him, and that's it. So uh, just to put it out, if you look at the cross, even on the papers this morning, and different, you know, uh, media platforms, that has also been made. Uh, also, the Obidati media has not also come out to say someone, that statement is not from us. So uh, we still think that that's a thing to go by. Well, we, we will, uh, we, like I said, we need to give it a bit of a time. So I understand where you're coming from. I, I totally yes. get it where you're coming from, especially when you are in the United Kingdom. But then uh, let's turn our attention to other interesting issues as well, which is on the Punch newspaper. It talks about the fact that Nigerians imported 
not less than nine items worth 18.212 trillion naira uh, from the forex ban list of the Central Bank of Nigeria. That's between 2016 and 2022. And uh, interesting, some of these items, just like I mentioned, you'll have the cooking um, oil, you have meats, you have other items. Uh, what are your thoughts to this really, that we really have to import some of this? Some of them are agriculture or produce or product. Uh, what do you make of this? Uh, there are two things I make out of this uh, story. The first thing I make out of this story is that very often you hear the central bank governor disparaging the parallel market as an illegal market, as uh, a market that uh, should not be uh, containers with, and things like that. And Messi, this report, it shows that the, the, the money that these people used in importing these items that are not on the central bank official list, the dollars were sourced from the parallel market. So the parallel market, I tell people, is a real market. It's a market where those whose importation needs are not on the official list of the CBM go to. And there is no reason why the central bank governor and other policymakers in Nigeria will continue to disparage this market. In fact, I once asked, uh, I was in a debate with uh, an economist and I asked him, has he ever used his Nigerian debit card to go and spend abroad? If he did, what is the rate that the banks will use to convert his Naira to the expenditure that he made in that foreign shop? It is the parallel market rate. The banks do not use the central bank rate. So this um, a parallel market uh, is a real market, and I, and I want... Uh, the, the new government, and this is setting the agenda for the new government, that they should simply cancel that so-called official market. Because that official market is actually the illegal market. That is the market where people go collect dollars currently at 400 and something naira, and they just uh, uh, transfer it to the parallel market and sell it at 700 and something naira, making over 300 naira gain on a dollar. Imagine somebody that has access to only $1 million in the official market. If he then takes that market around, trips it to the, to the parallel market, he's going to make $300 million naira without raising a finger to do anything. So the, the, the government of uh, 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 the, the new government coming into office should just cancel that central bank market. Let all of us be going to that parallel market to go and source money there. If you have dollars to sell, take it to that market. If you want to buy dollars, take it to that market. And this will include also government, so that we can really know the true uh, rate of exchange of the Naira and the dollar. That is the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is that it is a shame. <laughs> it is a shame. This report should shame all of us, starting from our policymakers, our leaders, to the every uh, man uh, on, on the street. Why? Because why are we going to import things that we can produce in Nigeria by ourselves? Everything that is listed, we can produce it here. But we are so lazy and we are not producing. So we just enjoy going to go and buy from abroad. And it is going to buy from that abroad that is making the exchange rate to be weak, to, to make Naji, Naira to be weak. Because you need a, a Naira all the time to be chasing dollar, to buy dollar. And the price of dollar is going to go up. It's a simple law of uh, demand and supply. So again, setting the agenda for the incoming government, they should look inwards and boost production in Nigeria. And there are very simple things that they will need to take, very uh, simple steps that they must take immediately once they uh, get into office. One, begin to increase the power supply in Nigeria. At 3,000 megawatts, we keep singing, crying, wailing, and pleading. That 3,000 megawatts of electricity for Nigeria is just too small. South Africa is doing 50,000 megawatts. India is doing 400,000 megawatts. How can we be doing 3,000? That is number one. Number two, there has to be security in Nigeria immediately so that farmers will go back to their farms. And then when the farmers go back to their farms, there has to be 
uh, uh, support given to these farmers. As we speak today, majority of Nigerian farmers are still using their brute force energy, bending down with hoe and cutlass to farm. They need mechanization. They need to be supported with mechanization. What a tractor can produce in one year, I mean, sorry, what a tractor can, can, can produce in one day, we take a farmer 10 years of his life to produce it. You know, so these are the kind of basic things that Nigeria needs to put in place so that we will rather be the exporter of food and other uh, items instead of going to go and buy. And you know, the consequence of, uh, of boosting production is that it will not create jobs. It will create jobs. Imagine we have all the mechanized farms, we have all the processing factories, they will have the transportation, the shipping, and all of that. Majority of these jobless youth that we see these days will be gainfully employed. When you ask him, where are you working? He said, well, I'm working in one tomato plant. And it's a multi-billion dollar tomato plant somewhere. I'm working in a, in a one yam uh, processing uh, this thing. I work in one plantation in this place. That is where they'll be working. And then in, in some of these insecurity issues that even we were discussing yesterday will be curtailed because if the youth have jobs, they will be going to their work. You know, they are not going to be available to people to be using for these nefarious uh, acts that we're talking about. But, but Nikagule, so these even, are my two views on yes. this uh, story. Yes. So, but let's even look at, you know, um, what it is that we're talking about. Because uh, it's, it's not that these items that we're importing, we don't also produce them here. I think that we're producing them here. But then again, is it that we're not producing enough? you know, to meet the demands or is it that they are substandard? What could be the reason why uh, we still have to be importing from other countries, just like you say, what we can produce? So I know, for instance, that, I mean, there's still production of palm oil, but um, is it enough? Uh, is that the reason why? why? Why would we be patronizing what, you know, we can actually produce? Why are we buying what we can produce? And why are we not big on, you know, ensuring that we can produce them and rather export them instead of, being an importer of this, uh, you know, product? I think uh, there, there, are, there are two reasons there. The first one, which is the minor one, is that Nigerians over time have come to uh, regard uh, imported products uh, higher than uh, our locally produced product. That's why some people can package uh, local rice and, 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 and write uh, foreign rice on it so that it will deceive consumers to pay higher prices for what they think is foreign rice. But I think it's a minor reason. The, the major reason is that we're simply not producing enough locally. You see, Nigeria is an economy of over 200 million people. It's a lot of people. You see the United Kingdom where I'm sitting here, they're only 60 something million, 60 something million. You see most of these nations you see around, the, the Canada is like 30, 33, 35 million, less than 40. You know, so to have 200 million people, 200 million as a market, it's a lot. There's so much uh, mouth to feed. So this, what we are producing is simply not enough, you know. And, and you know, Messi, there, there, there's a video I showed. Uh, I think there's a video I showed on this program one time. If you see what mechanized agriculture is, we would have been talking about if you leave Lagos all the way to Ibadan, to Ilori, all the way to Sokoto, Turn around, go head to Kano to Meduguri, down to Potako, cross river. No single piece of land will be left uncultivated. Everything will be cultivated. Every piece of land, apart from where there's human settlement, there's a body of water or a forest, has a tractor on it that has cultivated. Look, if we have that in Nigeria, Mercy, you will know that nobody is going to bring a single bag of rice from outside into Nigeria. We we'll have enough food, we we'll attain food sufficiency, and then you will see cargo upon cargo of rice at Apapa being loaded onto ships to export them abroad. So we are simply not producing enough, and we cannot produce enough with 3,000 megawatts of electricity. That's the first point that the incoming government must tackle. Again, to let's get back to Lagos. It's also on the papers. I'm sure that you probably have seen that building that collapsed structure uh, somewhere, you know, Banana Island. It reminds us of uh, what happened in 9-11, you know, real time, uh, see the structure going down. However, a few persons are trapped and we hear that uh, lives have not been lost. 
some persons have sustained injuries. The government has activated it. But however, government is saying that um, the building actually lacked permit. What are your thoughts? Do you believe that story that that building would have been erected without government's involvement? I don't believe. I don't believe. But before I even uh, discuss government involvement, let me say that uh, I watched that video. I think somebody captured it. Maybe it is a security camera because I'm just imagining how someone would have captured the moment that building came collapsing down. I watched that thing and it, it sends, uh, you know, I, 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 it's cuddling, it's blood cuddling. Uh, that is it. You are showing it now. Mercy, let me confess to you. I now have phobia to climb high-rise buildings in Nigeria. I think the, the, the probably the only high-rise buildings I can climb in Nigeria are the ones that have been standing there for years, for decades. Any new high-rise building in Nigeria, I think Nikagule will have issues trying to climb it. Because if you see a building collapse like a pack of cards, I think it's meant to be concrete, iron, and cement. It's meant to be a, a mixture sorry, of concrete, iron, and cement. And if that thing can come collapsing like a pack of cars, it's scary. And now to say that the government is not aware, the government is aware. There is no way you'll be constructing anything anywhere that the government will not know. We see it. You'll be trying to, you'll be seeing, you'll be passing on the road and you see somebody is trying to erect a fence and government will come and mark a big X on it and say urban development board, this and that, council, this and that. And now you see a big building like that going up in a place like Banana Island and government is not aware. This is aware. The people who are making, the constructing the building uh, must have gone to sort out the government people to take, uh, take their eyes away from what is happening. And this is the reason why this thing will continue to happen unless certain measures are, are going to be taken. Again, setting the agenda for the incoming government. For something like this, between the Lagos state government and the federal government, if it, if it means a new law to be enacted, let it be enacted, whoever is involved in this thing, from the builder, from the owner of the building, from the government agencies that should have stopped these people, from suppliers of uh, the, the raw material, I mean, the materials for this uh, building, should all be arrested, tried, and put away to jail. You see, Messi, we will not have a society that we all uh, love to operate in if we are not picking, if the government is not picking people off the street and putting them in jail. I'm sitting here in the United but, 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 Kingdom. But Nick Agule, I mean, if you say that uh, the federal right. government and the state government needs to enact laws, again, I ask, is it that we don't have laws already guiding it? What's the guarantee that, you know, there will be enforcement of these laws? Because in 2010, if you follow the pattern of, you know, collapse building in Lagos over time, the Lagos state government had passed into law, um, you know, uh, the Lagos state urban and regional uh, planning and development law. That was, you know, planning law in 2010. And then under that, there were three agencies that were created under the ministry to ensure control. So you have the, um, you have under that the physical planning and development agencies under the ministry. So you have the physical planning and urban development uh, ministry. You also have the Lagos State Physical Planning Permit Authority. You also have the Lagos Building Control Agencies. So within this ministry, you have three of these, you know, arms working together. The reason they were established is to ensure that there's, there's a lot of checks and balances to check all of these excesses in the system. And then again, we continue to have that. So yes, you're having response saying, oh, this, got, this, this structure didn't have a permit. So is it with the laws? Because what's the guarantee that even if you come up with the law and say, oh, whoever is involved, they'll be prosecuted. It's not the same thing we see with people committing crime, terrorists, killing people, and no one is apprehended, no one is being arrested. If you look at the criminal code, what does it talk about mother? If you look at, you know, there, there are too many laws. So what's the guarantee that, you know, enacting another law is going to solve the problem that all oh, those who are involved should be, you know, sentenced or imprisoned? Well, we can't even follow the basic laws to ensure that we don't even have all of this happening. I agree with you entirely, Messi. I agree with you that uh, Nigeria is a country of laws. We have so many laws. 
in fact, uh, a country like the United Kingdom, where I'm speaking to you from now, does not even have a constitution. The UK does not have a written constitution. Whereas Nigeria has a constitution, we have all sorts of laws. So the problem is about law enforcement. You know, the bit we are touched about lawmaking was that uh, if in the current uh, laws that we have, there is no specific law that addresses matters like building collapse, where if a building collapses, then the owner of the building, the builder himself, the architect, the engineers, uh, those who supply the building uh, materials, the government agencies that should have ensured that that building was constructed in line with regulations, all those involved should be picked up, tried, and locked away. Until we begin to lock people away, lock bad people away, Nigeria can never be a good country where we would love to live in. This UK, where I'm speaking to you from now, they have 80,000 people, 80,000 people locked away in prison. And some are also in prison at their homes. That is what you call suspended sentence. You actually jail someone for three years and suspend him because you allow him to be at his home, but you are watching him. If he commits that crime again, he will be taken to prison straight away without going through a judge again. So until we start picking people and putting them away to prison, we are not going to have a country that we will enjoy. You know, we allow bad people and good people to coexist. And that is very bad. That is rotting tomatoes with good tomatoes in the same basket. That whole basket of tomatoes is going to be rotten. And this is the problem we are having. So it's more about law enforcement. If there are laws already, like you are rightly saying, in Lagos State, for instance, that uh, prevent things like this or uh, they guide against things like this, then let the Lagos State government act on this. By today, the owner of that building should be arrested. His builder, his architect, his engineers, everyone that is involved in that building should be arrested, put through trial, and locked away. Mercy, this is the only way we can enjoy Nigeria. All right, then. But uh, just as we, you know, move away from the paper review, this would just be the last but it's on the Daily Trust. Uh, the fact that the International Monetary Fund is imploring the government to undertake fiscal consolidation. They are saying um, it's okay to tighten fiscal policy, increase tax for Nigeria. And, and, and do you think that that's, uh, you know, do you think that that's, really good for our economy, like more tax at this particular point in time where unemployment rate has actually gone, you know, on the other side, it's on the high. And then you also have the fact that uh, the narrow scarcity had left us with a lot of scar. Then you also also have the fact that we haven't even recovered totally from COVID-19. Should we think about more tax uh, on the people the, the, the IMF uh, is wrong to prescribe more taxes. What we need in Nigeria is to widen the tax bracket and bring in taxes from people who are not paying tax now. In Nigeria, the people paying tax are the poor people. Poor people, like if you go to the market now, they are cutting a ticket for those market women. Every day cutting ticket, they are paying taxes. And then those who are working, they take pay from their pay slip immediately. How much tax did Dangote pay? How much personal income tax did Dangote, Hotel Dollar, uh, 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 the, the global company, uh, Tony Lumelu paid last year? These are the conversations that we're not having. Elsewhere in the world, people like Tony Lumelu, Dangote and Co, they will be publishing their tax returns every year so that we Nigerians will be seeing that, oh, they paid X billions at tax because of the money they have. They have. The big men in Nigeria are not paying taxes. And what government needs to do is to bring them into the tax bracket, increase tax on a, an already struggling population. People are finding it difficult to, to feed their families. If we increase the tax rate, it will end up being the same workers who will pay through their pay and those market women. So that's what Nigeria needs. We need to get the big men to come in with their taxes. Mm -hmm. and then they, they, but then I want to say something. Uh, which probably the IMF uh, didn't address or they took their eyes away from. Mercy, we have been having issues. To manage an economy, you need monetary policy, which the central bank run, and you need fiscal policy, which the Minister of Finance run. For probably the past eight years, there has been conflict between fiscal policy and monetary policy in Nigeria. The central bank is busy increasing interest rate to fight inflation. The, the government is busy going to borrow money from central bank. 
to to push into the economy to 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 flare up the inflation the more and the government is uh, doing uh, uh, building budgets calling a budget of growth how can there be growth when interest rate is increasing and uh, manufacturers are no longer having access to credit to produce so there has been a conflict between these policies and what is needed for the incoming government again setting agenda for the incoming government is to harmonize economic management let us have a strong economic management team we have put monetary policy and fiscal policy. We go together hand in hand. There are two lungs in the same body, and one cannot be breathing in while the other is breathing out. It's going to be a catastrophe, and that's what we have been witnessing, especially in the past eight years. Let's just let it go at this point in time. We would uh, continue to talk about these issues. We won't relent. Uh, thank you so much for always lending your voice to some critical national uh, concerns right here in Nigeria. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much, Mercy. And a uh, nice day to all our viewers. All right, then. That's the size of Off the Press for us this morning. On The Breakfast, we have been speaking with a public affairs analyst, Nika Gule, who joined us this morning via Zoom. Uh, uh, from the United Kingdom. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll delve straight to our first conversation. Please stay with us. Good morning.